Great to be with you at the GSMA 5G Thrive event. With 5G, we have created the biggest innovation platform ever. And I think this is starting to show now in the interest from industries and from enterprises to really move on to 5G. If we look a few years out, our prediction is that by 2025, we will have 2.8 billion 5G subscriptions. And already end of this year, 2020, we will have some 190 million subscribers, mainly in Northeast Asia, also North America and parts of Europe and rest of the world covering that. But it is a faster uptake of 5G than with 4G. And we also see here in the uh, mobile subscription by technology slide to the left here, that the combination of 4G is really what is the powerful combination going forward as well. So moving from 4G to 5G, reusing spectrum from 4G into 5G and coexistence between 4G and 5G is really the workhorse of the coming 10 years. We have a strong uptake when it comes to mobile operators deploying 5G, and we have passed 109 commercial contracts, and a number of the networks are now up and running around the world. But this uh, combination of 4G and 5G and the way to use Ericsson spectrum sharing in a dynamic manner, that is also what is helping us to reach really high population coverage already by 2025. So on this graph, you can see that um, end of last year, we had some, some 5% of the, the world population covered, but already by 2025, we expect as much as 55 to 65% of the world population having a 5G signal, having 5G coverage. Some of this is the, the fact that we can reuse and leverage the 4G frequencies and the 4G infrastructure. Some of it is, of course, population that is using the mid bands and the high bands and new 5G frequencies. Uh, and, and taking much of the, the capacity out of that. This is uh, also the new normal for us now through the pandemic. And uh, although we have seen that traffic has increased by, in some cases, 20%, in other cases, up to 70%, when there is not a strong fixed infrastructure that can handle this new work from home or work remotely, but the networks are really standing up very well. And this is also witnessing that the, the kind of... Uh, <clears throat> traffic shifts, whether movements uh, to home or, or to, to locations outside of offices and normal commute roads, that's something that networks today and in the future need to be even more flexible to adapt to, need to be even more prepared for. But we also see the, the shifts in terms of uplink downlink. So not only do we have these increases of usage when it comes to work from home, we also see that the uplink traffic is substantially increased. And that means that the performance in the uplink, sellage performance, and in general using scarce spectrum in the best possible way also in the uplink becomes so much more important. And also when it comes to leveraging 5G for fixed uh, wireless infrastructure uh, build out, that is starting to, to take off now. And we see that this will most likely accelerate over the coming years as we have this, this mixed mode of, of, of society with digital first um, basically being accelerated now in the current situation. So um, this is uh, what networks are built for today. But we also know that uh, as an innovation platform, 5G need to cater to applications that are coming from the enterprise side, coming from the uh, industries, whether it's in the manufacturing, transportation, logistics, whether it's in harbors, advanced uh, mines, or, or basically any other industry. And to do that in an efficient way, we have to open up the networks for innovation from the top. And here I've uh, shown the horizontal architecture, the open architecture that we drive in the industry that really allows us to, to support industries, support enterprises, with connectivity, but also compute and storage wherever they need it in a distributed fashion. But I've also indicated with call outs here where we see that there is more need to develop and also accelerate the capabilities that this innovation platform have. And if I start to the left, we can see that to be able to consume this platform or consume network services as a service or uh, by, by deployments locally, we need to have order interfaces such as the network slices, being able to, to use 5G almost in a private manner with resource reservation. And this, of course, is true for 4G and 5G and needs a connection to the, the business systems of the enterprises. To the right, you also note that it's very much about opening up to applicators, making sure that 
the right tools and the, the right environments are available and connected to the network. And here you see a lot of movements when it comes to the enterprises, the operational technology, the IT side, but also on the cloud provider side, where those uh, developer ecosystems are now being onboarded to 4G and 5G. It goes without saying that this requires the most efficient automation. It requires us to, to leverage the operations data that is flowing through the network. And that's where the change to become a data-driven platform where AI technologies are permeating not only on the services side, but also into products and solutions that are providing significantly enhanced performance, whether it comes to our innovation, uh, our solutions for products when it comes to handover times, when it comes to uh, better resource utilization, or for that matter, on our services side, where we are using Ericsson Operations Engine as a vehicle to help automate operations across operators. At the top here, uh, very much about orchestration across uh, an infrastructure with, which is supporting multi-vendor innovation. This is also very much about having uh, <clears throat> the cloud native workloads being placed basically anywhere in this infrastructure. This is a change in terms of how we build applications, but more than that, it's a change in terms of how we manage the life cycle of these applications in a DevOps fashion. And to the, the upper left, very important, in this horizontal architecture, we are introducing Cloud RAN to be able to serve new applications and new needs in the enterprises and in places where the scalability of a cloud native Cloud RAN implementation is really uh, providing the best value, interworking with the traditional infrastructure with zero touch management. So this is really where the industry can leverage the strength of the scale and the capability that is already there with 5G today and opening up for new businesses and new opportunities in the enterprise uh, and industry space. So that's where we are today. Uh, if we look a few years into the future, perhaps even a decade ahead, we see that this platform will really serve us very well. But we also see in a 2030 time frame that there will be new needs that we have to cater for. And in our technology trends, published now for 2020, we look 10 years out and look at what are the drivers for the networks of 2030 and also what are the enablers. So if I start with the drivers, the first one is really about digital twins. It's about the collaborative, automated, physical and digital world. And this we experience today, but we also see that to, to be able to cater for this in the, the long-term future, we need to re-engineer the networks to really handle all kinds of information that digital twins represent. We are doing some uh, early work with ports around the world. The uh, port of Livorno in Italy is a good example where we're using digital twin technology already today with 5G, where we can increase efficiency by some 10, 15% already today, but we see fantastic opportunities in terms of re-engineering the whole workflow flow, and, and for them create growth in terms of how they handle their logistics challenges. The second one is on machines, intelligent machines that are connected over this infrastructure. And here we don't see a limit in terms of latency. In fact, machines, intelligent machines would require even lower latency than we as humans require, where we typically stay with 10 milliseconds or maybe down to a millisecond basis. But here we have to go beyond that, especially in, in factory settings where, where machines need to communicate with much more data, much richer going forward. The third one is really the exciting part of humans being augmented with the Internet of Senses, where today we have augmented and virtual reality. We have haptics, we have soon smell and taste, but we will also be able then to exercise this over distance so that you are part of and you are engaging and interacting with objects on the other side of the world. And here we see some, some great advancement in both the consumer space as well as in the, the enterprise and industry space. So these are exciting trends, I would say, exciting drivers for the network platform. And if we turn them to the, the enablers, what needs to go on as we upgrade and modify and modernize the digital infrastructure itself? Well, the first one is really about limitless connectivity, where we take connectivity to basically every place around the world, whether it's a deep indoor situation, whether it's simplified deployment in uh, enterprises and SMEs and, and 
and also of course in, in industry settings but it's also about connectivity wherever you are out and about so the rural coverage the remote places would need to be covered in an efficient way with the limitless connectivity the second one is is in on the combination of networking compute and, and storage and and that comes in in the form of a network platform today but going forward five to ten years this fabric will be even easier to consume and of course it will have new capabilities in terms of accelerators it will have new capabilities in terms of really advanced perhaps neuromorphic computes at the edges to do exactly the right ai inference where it's needed at the lowest energy uh, possible and of course this is a new way of building applications and here we are relying very much on working with a broader ecosystem to really uh, foster innovation on top of the network Trustworthy infrastructure is a combination of performance, reliability, robustness, and also, of course, security built in from the start. And this, these requirements will, of course, be very tight and, and increasing for critical national infrastructure. But it's also very much about realizing that the deployments, the topology, the, the backups, the robustness can and need increase going forward. And the uh, fourth one on the enabler side is really about being data driven and using AI machine learning technologies, machine reasoning technologies throughout the platform. We are already doing this today in our Ericsson operations engine on our services side, where we see fantastic opportunities to simplify, but also to get much higher performance. But we also see similar gains when it comes to the products and solutions. So AI being built into products from the ground up is really enhancing performance by uh, in some cases orders of magnitude. But here we talk about increased uh, efficiency. We talk about handover times that can be reduced. We talk about enhancing the user experience. All really exciting parts of the journey towards the cognitive networks. With this, I'd say that we have a great foundation in the network platform. It has been the backbone in the 4G era of the smartphone uh, and the, the app economy. Now it's becoming the spinal cord of society and therefore providing this intelligent digital infrastructure. It is really designed to carry a vast uh, range of messages, insights, of course, sensory information. I touched upon that when it comes to the Internet of Senses. And it is, of course, about being available and accessible anywhere, always on, of course, and with guaranteed performance, where robustness, resiliency are characteristics that you have to be able to rely on, much like we're doing today in this remote setting. And it is, of course, also helping when it comes to the big problems of humanity. It's about a connected world where sustainable operation, not only of our digital infrastructure, where we're taking our part of the energy efficiency and, and, and the sustainability aspect, but also very much about supporting other industries as they are digitalizing, using 5G as a digital infrastructure, as a change agent. And some of the work that we are doing in the exponential roadmap, I think, can be great inspiration and great guidance when it comes to lowering the footprint, when it comes to increasing energy efficiency, and therefore provide a sustainable infrastructure across industries. So with that, great uh, to, to be here in this um, GSMA event. And uh, I think we have a fantastic opportunity ahead of us when it comes to innovation in and on the network platform.